This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Ting. Coming up on Destructoid, Assassin's Creed 3 shows off more footage of its beautiful engine, Mass Effect 3 gets its first single player DLC, and how do you make the nerds more excited about Dishonored? You put Princess Leia in it. Seriously. All that and more right now on Destructoid Live. Hello there. Welcome to Destructoid. I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scova. What is this weird layer of professionalism? It scared the hell out of me. Oh, that was professional? You were like, hello there. I was there. going for sexy, but that works too, yeah, I guess. I don't know. This is... It, I don't know what sexy is. That's not, like, you sound like a front desk I've person. I've that time and time again. Security. Hello there. Do you have an appointment? Well, welcome to our Friday live show. Where uh, anything got can a lot happen. happening today, yeah. actually. A lot of things to talk about. Talk it's about exciting. Our giveaway. Let's talk about the giveaway. Okay, so it's it's Friday. That's a thing. Uh, we got a lot of news, but again, it is Friday. I'm sorry, guys. And because it's Friday, we're going to have to give something away. Uh, we've got some pretty cool stuff to give away. It's five codes to Orcs Must Die 2. It's the third person tower defense game. It came out this week. It's getting really great reviews. I'm sorry about that. It's got a 9 on Destructoid right now and an 84 on Metacritic. And I'm, I'm really, I apologize again. These are Steam codes, so it, they pretty much can run on any gaming PC in the world. I mean, I'm really, I, I know we usually try and have like really, you know, complicated prizes that are, you know, difficult to do, but this is, all you need to do this time is tweet, I'm watching at Detoid Show, live at www.youtube.com slash Detoid, or www.revision3.com slash watch for a chance to win at Orcs Must Die 2 on Steam. And you have to you have to mention everybody and use the WWs to link to things. It's all an elaborate trick to make people come and watch this show that we're doing yeah. right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I know this is a really this is a great prize, and I'm I'm sorry about that. I just I'm you know I just sorry yeah. about our contest. I know it's stop apologizing, uh, Max. Also, it goes without saying that if you're not watching this live, don't tweet anything. Don't do that because only people who are watching no, live can win. You gotta tune in. Snooze, you lose. All right, why don't we get into uh, some topics of discussion? Do you have anything some, you want to yell about? some good stuff this morning. Do you want to do some uh, yelling? Yeah, talk of the Twitterverse uh, was the big fat lawsuit that EA slapped Zynga with over their game The Vill and its glaringly obvious likeness to EA's game The Sims Social. So the lawsuit, which was filed on behalf of Maxis, which is an EA subsidiary, alleges that Zynga, quote, copied and misappropriated the original and distinctive expressive elements of The Sims Social in a violation of US copyright laws. They also added that the similarities go well beyond any superficial resemblance. And if you've ever seen a Zynga game or logged onto Facebook or breathed air, it's really not hard to believe that Zynga would rip off another company's games. But hey, that's just me. Nonetheless, EA has framed the lawsuit as a means of protecting the rights of other creative studios in the industry who may not have the financial resources to protect themselves. So why don't we just recap for a moment? Uh, this is now the second lawsuit that Zynga is facing this week alone, not year or month or anything, this week. Uh, the first one was filed just a few days ago by five different law firms which accused several Zynga in executives of insider trading, which is an arguably more serious offense considering their recent shit spiral of stock value. But back to the copied games. Uh, Zynga's general counsel, Reggie Davis, responded to the copyright lawsuit with a statement saying, quote, this response clearly demonstrates a lack of understanding of basic copyright principles. It's also ironic that EA brings this suit shortly after launching SimCity Social, which bears an uncanny resemblance to Zynga's oh, Cityville game. Blow it out your ass. First of all, <sighs> shut up, Zynga, okay? Even the people who play your games don't like you. They're only doing it because they're bored with their weird lives and you just happen to fill some odd dad-shaped hole. Secondly, as someone who played several hours of Cityville for research, it is no less a victim of uncanny resemblance than the original SimCity is. The only difference is that you guys were the first ones greedy enough to dumb it down to the lowest common denominator and put it on Facebook so idiots can waste all their money on farm points or barn dollars or whatever ridiculous made up currency you created. Run tell, tell dad, homeboy. Yeah, thank you. It's what I was waiting for. Anyway, uh, if you guys are looking for a hearty chuckle or you just need a good pick-me-up, you should check out Joystick's list of highlights from the lawsuit, featuring such hits as, hey, that's my yoga mat, and standardized RGB skin tones. Who needs diversity? 
Seriously, Zynga, if you're gonna plagiarize, at least hire a mathematician to make sure you don't stick your foot quite so far up your own ass next time. Hey, this is a, like a new level of ridiculous. You're a mathematician, Tara. I know. You should work at Zynga. Hell just, no. I'm just kidding. No. No <laughs> one should work at Zynga. Oh, that was a joke, oh, right? Oh, God. This is, I mean, this is pretty funny. It's like, the, it's like when the two kids who were the meanest to you at school get in a fight and you're just like, I know. Whoever wins, I don't care. They got punched in the face. I'm like, not one to defend EA, but like, yeah. come on. This it's is pretty ridiculous. funny though, because Zynga really, they've, I mean, they've been, they've been screwing over like little independent guys who, you know, with like a tiny tower and stuff like that. And those guys are like, we don't have any money, but your dicks. Yeah. And EA's like, guess what we do have? Lots of money. Yes, this gun is loaded. I just can't believe that Zynga would copy something that's so popular and like widely known. Um, and so, <laughs> in such an obvious way also. Oh, uh, and then they're like, uh, yeah, excuse me well right but uh, I'm pretty sure th <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Sim City ripped off our game just gonna say th <laughs> anyway oh. <clears throat> so getting to real video games um, there are two types of video game trailers there are the overly theatrical ones that get you pumped about the story and then there are the more grounded ones that focus on the mechanics and the gameplay and today we've got a new trailer for Assassin's Creed 3 that's like a weird big combination. It's like the best of both worlds, I guess. Uh, the trailer is primarily giving us a more detailed look at what the new Anvil Next game engine is capable of, such as generating dynamic weather conditions in all four seasons, covered wagons and carcasses, um, also, you know, rendering up to 2,000 NPCs in a single area, or how Connor has a whole new moveset made up of like over 1,000 animations. We get a better look at some of the naval warfare stuff, and it sounds like it'll actually involve, um, you know, wind and water physics, as well as that weather thing I was saying, which is cool, because that's what real boats have to worry about. Yes. And real boats are the jam! We like boats. Look at those cannons! They're shooting, shooting bolas! That part was really fun. Anyway, this is all pretty standard stuff to show off in a tech demo, but usually you've got some guy who's like, and here we're saying this is rendering something. Bro. The VO in this is done by, like, the most histrionic narrator I've heard in ages. In addition to wanting to go out and buy Assassin's Creed 3, I also want to go buy a Lexus and some diamond rings, because he's that, he's got that much gravitas. It all comes to a big, blustering, gravitas-drenched crescendo when he says, wait for it. Welcome to the un-United States of America. He's, oh. He sounds like the narrator of every middle school history documentary we were ever forced to watch, which is not a good thing at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that was that's amusing. I thought that was that was sort of funny. The un-United States of America doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Kind of works, I guess. I guess they haven't been united yet. I don't think they're either. They're states either. They're colonies. So there's that. That's really not helping with the whole thing where there's some dumb people who th still think this is in the Civil War. Anyway, that being said, Assassin's Creed 3 does look really badass, and I'm excited about um, playing it and seeing all the different boats and weather conditions that are in it. Um, yeah. That's coming to PS3, 360, and PC, and that's and eventually to the Wii U, though we don't know when, because it's a launch title. Maybe, I don't know, but Nintendo doesn't know when the thing's coming out, so maybe we'll get details on that. But that's coming, uh, yeah, October 30th, or 31st in Europe. Very exciting. Yeah. Moving on to other video games, uh, Mass Effect 3, oddly enough, is something that we haven't talked about in a while for good reason, but guess what? Now we have a real reason. EA has announced the first original piece of DLC for the game entitled Leviathan, which is a single player focused piece of DLC and it's meant to expand on the origin of the Reapers. So this actually takes place during the middle of Mass Effect 3, during the Reaper invasion, and we see Commander Shepard and his team traveling across the galaxy to find the Leviathan, which is a mysterious creature with the power to stop the Reaper invasion. Or so they say. I don't know. I haven't seen it myself, so I don't know. Destructoid's Alessandro Filari had a chance to go hands-on with the expansion recently, and he was pleasantly surprised with how BioWare's increased the cinematic scope of the game while managing to add more grander set pieces, an arsenal of new weaponry, some new characters, and yes, wait for it, an updated ending. I cannot wait to report on that. It's going to be so much fun. <sighs> the part of the demo that he saw took place on a derelict ship that has some unknown connection to the Leviathan, uh, and it ended with Commander Shepard jumping into the ocean in a mech suit and then sinking to the bottom in order to examine some nearby sunken wreckage. So yes, I know what you're thinking. Water and possibly fish are confirmed for the first piece of Mass Effect <laughs> DLC. Very exciting. Leviathan will be releasing for 10 bucks on PC, PS3, and 360 sometime this summer, but no official date has been set yet. That's that's very interesting. I think that I think that it's funny because we thought the Reapers came from space, 
But oh no. No. They came from the ocean. Nope. It's whales, man. We have to go get the whales. Mm -hmm. It's that Star Trek movie where they get need the... time travel to save the whales. Oh, they also had a Star Trek uh, episode that sounded very similar to the Leviathan mm. DLC. Who where they would have thought? Ab examine anyway, an abandoned ship. But back to the Mass Effect. Uh, meanwhile, those of you waiting for the Wii U version, like I was saying with the Wii U thing, um, who haven't played one or two, will be happy to know that Bioware plans on including an interactive abbreviated recap mode made to bring new players up to speed on the events of the first two games. Uh, while still allowing for impactful decision making. <laughs> Excuse me. I laughed I'm when sorry. I wrote that. <laughs> oh, this snark, where is it coming from? Uh, we also got our first look at what the Wii U gamepad will look like in ME3. Basically, it displays a mini map, allowing you to move your squad mates along with eight quick access power buttons. Uh, you can also play the full game on the gamepad, allowing someone else to use the TV. Hmm. So, I guess there's that. Mass Effect 3 is slated to release alongside the Wii U, which will be launching on, fuck you, we're Nintendo, we do what we want, season 2012. That's my favorite time yeah. of year. You know, people, I'm sorry, Nintendo, people might pre-order the Wii U. Just, just, maybe, just, just on an off chance that oh. maybe that would make them some money. But instead, you know. I don't know. If you guys are looking for more information, we actually have some. Our producer, Zach, talked to some people recently about the Leviathan, Leviathan DLC and the Wii U version of Mass Effect 3. Look at him, all interviewing stuff, all grown up. Go, Zach. Anyway, those videos will be up on our Rev3 Games channel sometime next week, so watch out for those. I love that we constantly make fun of Zach for being all about sports, and then he shows up on camera wearing a shirt that just says sports. Yeah, he That's does great. it to annoy us. Zach, you do this to yourself. He told me. So um, I know we're all excited about Bethesda and Arcane Studios' new game, Dishonored. I know we're really stoked uh, about it, and except for that one guy, there's one guy out there who thinks it looks like a boring old cross between Bioshock and Half-Life. You know what? I like, hate that's that guy. a bad thing. What is wrong with you, man? Well, maybe this will change your mind. Yeah, Princess Leia's in it. Bam. Yeah, what's up? At QuakeCon yesterday, which we're gonna talk about in more after the break, Bethesda announced the voice cast for Dishonored, and it's good. Oh, it's a good one. In addition to Carrie Fisher, AKA Princess Leia from Star Wars, who will be playing an announcer who reads propaganda through the city's loudspeaker, we are also treated to the lovely Susan Sarandon doing the voice of Granny Rags, a homeless former aristocrat. Playing as the game's hero Corvo, you're going to be supplied with gadgets by an inventor named Piero, who's voiced by Deadwood's Brad Dourif. Also on the roster is Mad Men's John Slattery, playing Admiral Havelock, as well as Michael Madsen, portraying the role of Dwad? Dowd? Possibly Dad? I don't know how to read the made-up word. The Assassin. Lena Headey from Game of Thrones will play the caretaker to the Empress's daughter. There's like a really good chance she'll get naked. Who will play, uh, will be, the, the Empress's daughter will be played by Chloe Moretz, AKA Hit Girl from Kick-Ass. Who she is looks weird in that She's picture. added Grace to her, as her middle name. She's now Chloe Grace Moretz. She's like, I saw her in like Are a- Are you sure it's not part of her last name? I don't, I don't, maybe her parents got divorced because she's too famous now or something. I don't know. Anyway, Bethesda's always pretty good about getting top tier actors to voice really important characters in their games and then, you know, they hire the same four voice actors from down the street to do like that the other 200 NPCs in the game. Anyway, Dishonored is hitting PS3, 360, and PC the week of October 9th, and we are gonna be back in just a moment to talk more about QuakeCon, but first, a word from our sponsor, Ting. Considering how quickly and radically cell phones have advanced since their introduction, it is really sort of pathetic how little cell phone plans have improved. And that is why a bunch of cyberpunk phone wizards got together and formed Ting. Ting is a new service that aims to take the BS out of your plan and instead provide you a mobile experience that is easy to use, easy to understand, and that saves you lots of money. Instead of being locked into one dumb, stupid, ridiculous plan, you've got a flexible plan that bills your data, minutes, and text separately. If you go over in one category one month, they just bump you up to the next tier in that category only. It's like modular billing and it's how cell phone plans should work. They've got an online savings calculator and if you head to destructoid.ting.com and get started you'll get 50 bucks off the purchase of a mobile device just for watching our show. That's how much we love you, telephones. Again, that is destructoid.ting.com. Go check it out. So that's a thing. Um, yeah, we've got a contest we're doing. I know. I Did know. we tell you guys about we that? We told you about you the here? contest, but it might have been confusing. So let's tell you about it again. Uh, this is only for people watching us live right now um, on Friday afternoon in Pacific time. But all we have to you have to do is you go on the Twitter. This is for co codes for Orcs Must Die Two. We've got for five Steam. of them. Five of them. You got to tweet this exact exact thing. It's I'm watching at Detoid Show live at wwwyoutubecom detoid for or revision the revision three one. You have to type the www otherwise it doesn't work as a link and then nobody and watches then Twitter our show. And Twitter explodes. Yep, and then you'll get a virus. Also, and then uh, for a chance to win at Orcs Must Die 2 on Steam, 
Um, yeah. Yeah, so we will announce winners at the end of the show. So it's get, a, get it's those tweets in now. It's a good game. It's got like a nine out of ten, and then like an eighty-four on Metacritic, which is like one point shy of, of those developers being to go work on Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, too bad Metacritic is meaningless. Oh, Metacritic. Let's talk about what, QuakeCon. That sounds good. Um, like I mentioned earlier, QuakeCon is happening this weekend in Dallas, and QuakeCon is the bring your own computer gaming convention that celebrates PC gaming. Pretty much just just shooters, mostly, because it's yeah. Quake, so it started with, sure. with the, the WASDA and the, the mouse and the keyboard. And also, you know, they have big-ass tournaments and death matches and stuff, which is cool. Um, just like at other big gaming events, game companies take the opportunity to make announcements and show off new things they want you to buy. Obviously, since Quake is an id game and id is owned by Bethesda, Bethesda has a big presence there. Of course, with big presences, Come big presents. Oh, I see what you did there. Uh, he means gifts. Yeah, uh, Bethesda is discounting the shit out of their games. You can buy all of their PC catalog on Steam right now for $100. Huh. And it's normally like $500. Uh, and it's like even more of a discount if you actually pre purchase Dishonored. Th that's it's like $500 of games for $100. And this is a week after everyone blew all their money on the Steam sale. Scumbag Bethesda. Anyway, if you found like $100 on the street or something, just put it into your CD-ROM drive and that will be available until Insert August it. 5th. Just, yes, do that. Um, but this does not include uh, Skyrim DLC Dawnguard, which, oh, by the way, just randomly released for PC after everyone was mad that they couldn't have it sooner. That's right, 20 bucks on Steam right now will snag you Skyrim's Vampire Diaries expansion pack. Unfortunately, it looks like PS3 users will have to wait a little bit longer. It's okay, chance. they're used to it. Scumbag Bethesda! Scumbag Bethesda. I, weren't all of their, wasn't their entire catalog discounted to like 75 bucks during the Steam summer sale anyway? It was actually a worse deal than that, I think. I didn't, I didn't see that part. I yeah, well, they always have publisher catalogs and yeah. stuff on sale. There's so many it games. It might not have been the whole comprehensive between, thing Between though. like the mods, and those all those games, you could just get that and never buy games again. It's you could true. just download a mod for like for like Morrowind that makes it into every other game that's come out since Morrowind. Yeah, that's a lot of work though. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Anyway, uh, that is an exciting announcement. There were many actually to come out of QuakeCon this week, uh, and one that should particularly please fans of 90s PC shooters is that of an upcoming reboot for Rise of the Triad. Apogee Software, who developed the original game back in 95, has signed a deal with Interceptor Entertainment, which is the group currently working on Duke Nukem 3D Reloaded, which is the fan remake of Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, they're working together to create a sequel set to release on PC and Mac sometime later this year. Um, the game is going to be running on the Unreal Engine 3, but visual upgrades aside, it'll have a lot of the same features that you're used to if you've played the original game. Uh, there's going to be five playable characters, a single player campaign, a multiplayer mode, a few extras that you might recognize, things like dog mode, and wait for it, a heavy metal rendition of the original <laughs> soundtrack. <laughs> Guess yeah. what? It's got more electric guitars and yeah, dogs. That's what I want. <laughs> okay with that. Destructoids Alistair Pinsoff had a chance to go hands on with it at QuakeCon this week, and uh, he compared it to Quake 3, saying they're they're very similarly fast paced. Uh, this one's got jump pads and it's got smaller maps, which make things a little bit more hectic and chaotic than most modern shooters. Um, unfortunately, nostalgia does have its limits, and he said that the game's dull art direction and plethora of technical issues didn't exactly make for a strong first impression, even as a diehard fan of the original game. Um, of course, if Duke Nukem has taught us anything, it's that nostalgia is the key to a man's heart and wallet. And you penis. watch your damn mouth. And pretty much everything. You should shut really. up right now. You should shut up about Duke Nukem. I know your thoughts on Duke it, Nukem but I don't saint. approve. Anyway, um, you guys might recall a while back, crazy old id software co-founder and all-around brilliant mad scientist John Carmack started endorsing a pair of crazy virtual reality goggles he was, I guess, working on or playing with or something, generally using them to run Doom 3. It's just like, what do you, hey, hey, John Carmack, where's where's Doom 4? And he's like, huh? I can't hear you. I'm wearing this thing on my face. He's like the absent-minded professor. God, I love him. He's the best. Since then, these insanely cool goggles have shown up on Kickstarter with the name Oculus Rift and uh, shining endorsements, uh, including, you know, just besides John Carmack. Also, you know, Gabe Newell, who is looking more like Santa with his big, big white beard. Uh, Cliff Blazinski, who looks like Cliff Blazinski, and the guy who invented Unity, who's got like a crazy shirt in the video. Um, 
The Kickstarter has got 28 days left. That's almost a month. Hmm. It's already made $1.1 million Jesus. of its 250K goal. And that's, you know, probably gonna go up since Carmack mentioned two very exciting words. He said the word doom, and then right after that, he said the number four. <gasps> yep. He's what does already it gotten, all mean? Yeah, he's already gotten a version of Doom 3 running on the Oculus, and he told The Verge that he wants the same for whatever comes next. I'm excited for once Doom uh, Doom 3, the BFG edition, ships uh, and gets out there. I'll put all this stuff on the Doom 4 platform, which will be nice to take our current top-of-the-line stuff and have that in virtual reality. I'm looking forward to doing that. I love you, John Carmack. <laughs> Maybe. So, I mean, Doom 4 is obviously still a thing. Th that's a thing that's happening. John Carmack, like, by the time Doom 4 comes out, he's probably gonna be like, guess what, guys? We also got an actual working BFG that works up to the Oculus headset so you can blow up your walls and kill your neighbors. Crazy old Carmack. Anyway, what do we got Crazy for contest winners? Crazy old man Carmack. Uh, we got some contest winners. We yes. would like to announce those Who right now. Who the orcs must die? Let's see. There is Showtime GZ, Ponosaurus Rex, Connor 3000, Kyle Zenner and William C. Tippett won. Y'all's usernames are way too boring this time around. <laughs> Usually they're terrible we're and just, awful. We're just dicks. Uh, so congratulations to the winners. We will DM you your codes on Twitter shortly. As for the rest of you, I know you're near a computer right now or a phone or some kind of device capable of watching videos, so you have no excuse to not go watch this week's episode of Casual Friday in which Max, Anthony, and myself sit around at a table drinking something called Milk Stout, which is quite delicious talking about the games that we wish had sequels that never got them. I know you guys have opinions on this matter too, so go leave a comment on that video letting us know what game you want to see a sequel for that doesn't exist yet. You can of course find that video over on youtube.com slash rev3games. Max, what else did we do this week? Oh, you know, nothing major. Just the Olympics. Yeah. That's right, we actually did the uh, the Revision 3 Olympics, which was really fun. Um, there's, it's, we just did a bunch of silly shit. You got, I threw some water balloons yeah. at Tara. Max um, and I teamed up. We were representing Team Rev3 Games. We had a three-legged race. We were facing off against Team App Judgment and Team Techzilla. Uh, uh, I won't tell you the final result yet, but after four events, we are currently tied with Team App Judgment, while Techzilla just failed miserably. Yeah. It was um, a very special Olympics. Yes. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. I got to throw, a, I don't know if you saw it, I got to throw a computer, but we've got all, all uh, four parts, and then the, the fifth one should be up real soon. The fifth one you can find on youtube.com slash revision3. It's gonna be on today's episode of Annie's Bits. There'll be the final conclusion, the showdown between very, me and Jackie. Exciting. The arm wrestling showdown. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious who's already won, but still, you can pretend to be surprised. Uh, again, that is youtube.com slash revision3. And of course, you guys can follow us on Twitter. I am at Tara Longest on there. He is Max Scoville. And together, we are The Detoid Show. Any, pick one question to answer before have, we go. I have one question. Uh, the, 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 this is from Luanuru. What is with all the famous actors in video games lately? Hopefully the budget isn't all used up on actors and then the game is crap. Uh, number one, I don't think the budget for a Bethesda game is really an issue. I'm pretty sure that they're just like, oh, oh, we found some more money, let's hire Michael Madsen. Number two, speaking of Michael Madsen, he's actually been in video games uh, a bunch of times. He was in Grand Theft Auto 3, which came out like, I don't know, probably before you were born. It's yeah, like 12 I'm really years ago. bad at recognizing voice, famous voice actors in video games. I'm actually so very good at it. There's, I know a ton you that I don't even know about. You should go watch more it. movies and learn about what voices sound like. Clearly, what yeah. the fuck do I know about video games? Yeah, Tara, get yeah. out of here with your Farmville. We'll see you guys back here on Monday. Have a good weekend. <laughs>